Hi right, kiddos, my name's Mike Linsky from Baltimore, Maryland. So what are we doing? I had it all set up. The sun's in the wrong spot. You can't even see who you are. Oh, really? Yeah, there you go. Right, Much better. So I got everybody. Go ahead, start talking, well, Linsky. Here. You gotta do it so all right, forward. keep talking, Nuke. All right, we'll edit that later. You ain't gonna edit nothing. It's on there so that we'll make the tape up for you guys so you can listen to this and remember this, okay? Because sometimes you're not gonna remember and your parents are like, hey guys, what you learn at camp today? A lot. That's all. Right? What day, parents? What you learn at camp today? No. Nothing. I learned a lot of stuff, though. I learned a lot. I just don't remember it all. So we take some of it so you remember. So I went to Loyola High School, which is in Towson, Maryland. And out of high school, I got drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Any guys ever hear Pittsburgh Pirates? Raise your hand. All right, yeah, boo, Pittsburgh, uh, Steelers, boo. A lot of people don't like oh, Pittsburgh. Up. Right? <laughs> so I got drafted by the Pirates, and all of a sudden, I got full rides to scholarships, or full full rides to colleges on, on scholarships, Ac uh, athletic scholarships. Ended up going to James Madison and got drafted by the Orioles. Yeah, I love the Orioles. I played with the Orioles. Got drafted by them in the ninth round and played A, double A, triple A, big league roster that hurt my back and then went over to the Padres and played with the Padres for a little bit. But guys, this is what I'm here to show you today. Each one of those places, I started out in Little League. Right? I started out in Little League. Here's a little league ball. Some of them are soft like this, right? Now, when I talk, I use a lot of F words. I use things like fear, like focus, like failure. Not the wrong F words some of you guys are thinking about. I don't ever say those. I don't ever say those. But I want to work on one of my F words today, and that is focus. And I need all your help. Because I want to see if this group can focus as good as some of the other groups I've worked with in the past. This is what I'm going to do. With this baseball, this is where you are now. This is Little League Baseball. It's nice and soft. Ain't going to hurt you. Some of them are hard. I'm going to throw this ball up in the air. When I catch it, I want everybody to clap and see how focused you are on that ball because that's what baseball is about. What do you got to do? You got to focus on this ball to hit it. You got to focus on this ball to feel it. You got to focus on the catcher's mitt to throw it. So there's a lot of F going on. Focus. Let's see how we do. Your Campers, you're in. Camps are you're in on this too. Get ready. This this ain't above and beneath you. This is quality stuff. Here we go. Come on, throw it in the air. Get your hands ready. Let's see if we can all do it at the same time. Ah, some of you guys are a little early. Wait until he catches it. At the moment it hits the skin. Bang. This is part of it, guys. This is the sucky part. We're trying to learn, right? Anytime you learn, you don't feel comfortable with it. It doesn't feel really good. I'm going to show you a learning thing here you don't have a lot of fun with after this. Come on. Here we go, come on. That's getting picked off. I threw you the change up. Here we go. Good job. That's little. Now, where do y'all want to go next? High school. Well, you gotta go to high school and college, right? Guess what happens? High school and college, the ball changes a little bit. Things start going a little faster. Things start moving a little quicker. The ball seems to get a little small. This is high school and college. Because the game speed goes up, the ball seems to be smaller. It's the same size ball. Same size ball, but, but it's now so hard. He's showing you how a smaller dimension ball changes the perception of our game. 55 miles an hour, the ball looks like this. 85 miles an hour, it starts to seem like it shrinks down because it's quicker. Are y'all still focused? Let me see if you can do it at high school and at college. Come on. It's smaller, you gotta watch. Good. Alright, now quicken up on you because the game quickens up. Nice. One more level after high school and college. What's that? Major leagues. Pros, minor leagues. Minor. Minor. Major leagues, professional baseball. It gets a little smaller. This is this is the this is it. This is where the smallest percentage go to, where I've been and where many have tried to go, and I was fortunate enough and worked hard enough to get there. So let's watch. Here we go. It's small. I think you guys can do it. Every time I catch this, I want you to clap. Here we go. Watch me. Nice job. I see you working. That's a good job. Timing, baby. Good job. Good job. Did you see what he did? He didn't stop focusing. 
I kept doing this. Oh. So he's the major leaguer for now. He kept focusing. He never stopped. Now, all you guys, he threw you off, right? Yeah, oh, he started yap, 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 yap. He I thought it was off. over. He thought it was over, yeah. but one guy didn't. I'm a little leaguer. That's what it takes to get to the big leagues. Not to say you don't want to get to the big leagues, but that mentality that you never want to lose that focus because there are distractions out there. There's all kinds of distractions that get you off of your focus. Good job, guys. Here's the next thing I want to teach you. Now, this is a fun one. And I'll point to you. Learning really stinks. You know why I say that? Because it doesn't feel normal yet. When you learn, you're out of your comfort zone. I hate to learn the process of learning because it doesn't feel right. But then I learn to love learning. Right now, learning stinks for you. You're learning stuff in school. Man, my head hurts. Oh, gosh, I don't remember that equation. It's tough. So I do something very, very simple just to give you an exercise on how to learn. Now, some of you, I know, I haven't had anybody ever, ever do this. Ever. Say toy boat. Toy boat. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> One toy time. Boat, toy boat, toy boat. But he's got to learn. Boat, Hold on. He's got to learn to do it this way. And I learned. You say it quick. And I'm going to go to each one of you and point at you, and as soon as you mess up, I'm going to go, gone, 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 move down the line. But I say, toy boat, 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 toy boat. I learned that. It didn't happen right away. KC started. Toy boat. Yeah, he's done on one. Three times. No, he's done on one. Move to the next one. Go. Toy boat, toy boat. There you're done. Go next one. Toy boat, toy boat. There you're done. Go next one. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. All right, got on three. Go next one. Done on one. Go next one. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. There we go. Here we go. Now he's done on one. Ah, you got there. Go, keep going. Ah, you're done. Ah, you're done. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Toy boat. Ah, you're done. Ah, you're done. Ah, you're done on two. Ah, you're done. Go ahead. Ah, you're done. Go ahead. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Are you done? Toy boat, toy boy. Done. Toy boat, toy boy. Are you done? Guys, that's learning, right? None of us got it. But watch, listen. If you guys practice that, and you can practice it all day, come to me at the end of the day. You're out now, field checking. Toy boat, toy boat. Even if you get better than one, and you did two, guess what? You got better, and that's what it's all about. It's about getting better. Toy, 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 toy boat, toy boat, and I got no. Put the blue block back. Put the blue block back. Put the blue block back. Tongue twisters. Toy boat, 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 boat. boat. All right, quiet. Good. Now I'm gonna show you guys something. You ready to learn? Because I saw lollygaggers. There's this movie out there called Bull Dorm. That's how I got my nickname. I'll show you my big league card on my phone, and you'll see on my glove. I don't have that glove anymore, but it had the word nuke. I had to work nuke. You know what's that? It says nuke. Because in that movie, which was a really big baseball movie, what's the first baseball movie you think of? Sandlot. Sandlot. Right? Sandlot. This was an adult baseball movie, like rated PG-13, I think. Uh -huh. But it was like a Sandlot for adults. And one of the stars on that was Nuke Lalouche. He was a rookie pitcher that came up and was preparing professional ball at Bull Dorm Stadium, which is in North Carolina. It's an actual real minor league park. At that time, it was for Atlanta Braves. And I was big and tall and lanky like Nuke. I was left-handed, but the one in the movie was right-handed. He was kind of goofy and fun and love life, and I'm goofy and fun and love life. I believe in love, YOLO. You only live once and live every day like it's your last, because you know, don't know tomorrow if you're going to get sick or not. So live today like it's your last day, and then your life changes. So I want to teach you guys the proper way of throwing, because in that movie, the coach came in to talk to all his players, and they were, they were lazy. They weren't hustling. They weren't doing what they should have been doing. And he goes, hey, you guys aren't hustling around on the field. You're not getting up and making the plays. You're lollygagging over here, and you're lollygagging over here. So it's a lollygag. That's what I started calling it, lollygaggers. Now, it's not a bad thing. It's not lazy. I just used lollygaggers because he was doing this, and he was doing this, and he was doing this when he talked about lollygagging. When you throw your glove side, when you throw the ball, will tell the backside what to do. So if I see, and I see it every camp I go to, I see guys throw like this. Lollygag. 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 We ain't lollygaggers. We're pitchers and we're throwers. So 
I talk about the body being like a train. It's a powerful locomotive. Lots of power, lots of weight. When I go to step to my target, which is priority number one, you got to step to where you're throwing, I'm going to spread my wings. Where's that one hat that I got earlier? Where's the wing hat? Preston, the one. Preston, Preston, let me see your hat. Doing I love this one. He, yeah, he, he, he was a lollygagger. Give me your hat. He was a lollygagger, and then he wore a hat like that. And in five minutes, when I said spread your wings, he went from a lollygagger to a pitcher and a thrower in five minutes. Because he did it. Who's your best coach? We you know. That's right. You are. Right. You're your best coach. You don't hear stuff from Coach Gus. You don't hear stuff from the high school kids. You don't hear stuff from me. You eat it up and digest it like your favorite meal, and you make it your own. So when you spread, when you go to step to your target, when you step to that target, you're going to spread your wings. Just like that hat. Now, are you a chicken? You a chicken? Or you want to be an eagle? Spread your wings like an eagle. Now, you can spread your wings two ways. You can spread it like a spear, where you're like this, or you can spread it like a shield. Either way is fine with me. I don't want to make you guys all the same. It's your own style. But the important thing is you keep that thumb down. Because when you keep that thumb down, that keeps your front side, which is my glove side, it keeps it closed. Because what happens, if you don't use your legs to throw, you overcompensate. In other words, I use too much of my upper body. And what happens is you start throwing the ball before your foot lands. You ever try that? It's crazy. But a lot of you guys do it. It's like throwing a ball before your foot lands. That's crazy. But that's what happens when you don't land like this. And you land like this. This is my stride. There's two phases of throwing or pitching. You have the stride, which is where you pick up your leg, you generate all this power, and the stride ends when you land. Now, if you land right, you're in this position. My thumb is down, whether I'm a shielder or whether I'm a pointer. My arm is in a quarter cock position. This is a full cock position. Once again, a quarter cock position. That's the way the stride should end. There's a lot of scientists that study pitching. ASMI, the American Sports Medicine Institute, and they found out high-velocity throwers, guys that throw really hard, 95 and up, they will have a distinct difference between their stride, which is 75% of our throwing, and then our throwing phase, which is only 25%. So in other words, what that means is they don't blend the two together. The stride ends, and then they throw. What a lot of you guys do is you're here like this when you land. You start throwing before your stride ends because you don't use this. So this is what I'm here to teach you today. It's called the high. Yeah! Yeah. hi -ya! I do a lot of loud things to wake y'all up. Gus, use the box, right? Hayata. Hayata. Yoda. Look, I'm over here. Well, baseball front. is a striking sport, so I always use boxing and karate to give examples of our body movements, what we're doing. You want me over here? Yeah. Okay, here I am. All right, so give me a nice little simple jab. Jab. So he's keeping that right there. He's not doing anything with the elbow. He's not really using it. It's a short little jab to set up, to set up your power punch. Now give him the, what I call is a high, watch the elbow. Yeah! Off the jab. Did you see? Watch this. Watch this. This is his glove. Put on a glove. Give me a right-handed glove. Yeah, that's my left. You didn't stick your paw on there. Watch. This is the pitch of Saint punching. You never want to punch somebody. You want to punch a bag. Watch. All right. So what am I going to do? Jab. Give me a jab. Boom. See how that came back? Boom. That's power. So watch. This. Show me a lollygagger. I'm a lollygagger. Dang, nothing. Show me lollygagger again. Uh, lollygagger! Now show me how you can throw a punch. Mm, man, it hurts my hand. This, the front side. Get away from me, baby. I haven't done that a long time. The front side dictates how you throw the ball. So watch. This makes it a little simpler. That's a boxing one, but watch. Yeah, I know that. I scared him. A bee is in. There's another, there's another way that I show it, Mike, with show. karate, using karate. And karate, you ever guys take karate? Any of you? No. Nope, you do? So we, we talk about action-reaction. And that's a lot of things what Mike's talking about. It's 
you know, when he's talking about that front side causes the back side to work, it's in karate we get here and haya, 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 haya. So, so it's action, reaction. So that's what that is. This one, this one's gonna go. This one's gonna come back. Boom! Because I create this action coming back. Boom! I get that reaction that's coming out and creating the force. That's what Mike's talking about when he throws. Action, reaction. So when we throw, it's a drill. I'll have you guys do the high yard drill. I go to step, and I go high. When I land, when do you pull your glove in? As my foot lands, high, yeah. Right? Now watch. Now watch. I'm here like this. My glove, my my thumb is down. Right? So my thumb is down. I'm here. Now how I do it from here? My thumb is down, and when I pull in and I do my yah, my thumb comes up. Now this doesn't work for lefties, but it works for righties. And when I pull in, I'm not my glove. My elbow pulls in, and guess where my glove finishes? Yeah, yeah, huh? Over my heart. You guys love baseball? Yeah. yeah. And when you finish throwing, keep your glove over your heart when you finish throwing, and say I love baseball. Because if you do get a line drive after you throw, guess what? I catch it right there. So this is how it looks, guys. Hello, Bumblebee. How you doing? See you. Right, watch. It's here. Hi. Tell me if I'm doing right or wrong. Yeah. Wrong. What am I? Lollygagger. Oh, Lollygagger. All right. Ah, Tell me if I'm doing right. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Right or wrong. Lollygagger, right? Hi. Yeah. Lollygagger. Hi! Yeah! Yes! Ah, uh, got you, yeah. You see that? Oh. Oh. Alright, here we go. Take off my glove to make it simple. Yeah. Hey! Yeah! No. yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a little player. That's yeah. a good one. Hey! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, see, I pull it in? Yeah! That's how I want you guys to do it. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing. Do it now, later or later? Uh, you do it now. All right. So what is this? Yeah, it depends. Hello, Bumblebee. See you. Who knows what that is? Yep, down in the south, they carry whips. Why? So I got a truck stop down the south. <laughs> <laughs> so down, down, whip down south. Did you watch. whip somebody? I don't whip anybody. I wanted to show you guys how throwing and pitching is just like a whip. Now, for this whip to crack at the end, see how flimsy it is at the end? Yeah. That whip, if it cracks, has to move 767 miles an hour, and that breaks the sound barrier. And that's what makes a whip crack. Well, how can my arm move 765 miles an hour? It can't. It can't. So you have to let the process of your body work. When you throw, you don't rush your body. Watch what happens if I try to rush it. Nothing, right? Because I rushed. I rushed. When I throw or when I pitch, I have to be under control. Here, boom, and then I go. It's slow. So if I go slow like this, crack it here, whip, slow. Mm. Oh, my God, you're like, who is that? Slow. 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 Once I get out here, I push with my back leg. That's the crack. Mm. Now, if I try to tighten up here and throw real hard, and try to tighten this up and, and not relax it, then I can't make that crack. I can't do it this way. Right? My upper body has to be loose and relaxed just like a whip. If you tighten your upper body, the ball went, won't go where you want it to. And plus it won't go near as hard as you want it to when I relax and go nice and slow. Right? Hey Mike. That's how the body's hey like whip. Tell them about how the <laughs> legs are like the handle and the arm is like the end of the whip. Which one's stronger, the handle or the end? Right? If so, it's stronger, it's going to be thicker, right? Yeah. Look at my arm. Look at my leg. Which one's bigger? The leg. leg. The leg and your body is this. When I get up to the arm, this is kind of my shoulder right here. 
and then that's my arm, and then my last thing is the fingers. Looks like, a, looks like I'm fishing. I don't have to fish with that problem. Looks like a snake to me, man. Right? So realize where I can grunt and hey! When I do hey! That's here. That's my lower body. Here. Driving out. Once I hit and I start getting up to here, the yah is like release the power. They interviewed Nolan Ryan one time. Who knows who Nolan Ryan is? Yep, one of the hardest pitchers, one of the best pitchers of all time. It can be debated, but one of the best ones in my mind. They asked Nolan Ryan, hey, Nolan, how do you throw so hard? Well, Nolan from the south, he's down in Houston right now. He said, hey, let me tell you how I throw real hard. I come on up to my sit. I lift my leg up. I drive my body and my hips down the mound. I stick that front leg, and I let it go. Because once that power that you develop in your stride, shoo, boom, when it hits, you can't control it anymore. You just got to let it go, like Nolan Ryan says. It's like swinging a bat. Hey, I want you to step, take your hands back, get your hips going, bring the knob to the pitcher, get right there ready to release ball, and I want you to change your grip at the last minute. You can't do it. You can't do it. There's so much momentum and power at that point, you just got to let it go, and you relax the upper half. When you guys learn that, what's going to happen is your upper body is going to start going like cracking like a whip. Now, here's what a lot of pitchers do too. A velocity killer. How many of you guys been down to City, Maryland? Me. Right? Me and Gus go down to City, Maryland on Tuesday. That's right. And we brought our ball with us because we like to play beach ball on the sand. Me and Gus, and I'm just here. Gus, can we show how we don't toss it back and forth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, here's the thing. I bring this beach ball out to let you guys know when you lift that leg up and I stride, this front leg is just like a beach ball that you go down to in Ocean City, Maryland, and I throw it to a wave. If I throw this beach ball into a wave, that wave's going to take that beach ball and just keep it in front, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it right there. Beach ball's not going to be way out there. It's got to wait for the wave to get it, right? It doesn't go behind it because the wave's too powerful. Your front leg, if I'm throwing this way, is just like a beach ball in a wave. I lift my leg up, I lift my leg up, and I don't reach with my leg, no! The beach ball doesn't go out in front of the wave. I lift my leg up and relax my front leg, and the wave is this. I'm here and I drive the beach ball out, and my front leg stays relaxed. All the power comes from here, pushing out at the last minute till, yeah! front leg lands. Your front leg is like a beach ball. Don't let it get too strong, guys. Can you whip the beach ball to whip? I'm not that good at accuracy yet. I'm just good at cracking it. Oh, yeah, but this is our beach ball. I don't want to ruin it. We're learning how to you pitch. Break it. We're learning how to pitch. pitch. You guys want to play catch with us at Ocean City, Maryland? You mean to tell me you'd rather see a carnival show than really learn how to get better at this pitching? I thought you were in the camp. To learn how to throw harder and hit Here's the last thing, guys. I want to show you this. I want to talk about this. This glove here dates back to 1954. This is Mort Cooper's glove paid for the Cardinals. Gloves. Let me see another glove. Let me see the, uh, yeah, that one's good. That one's good. Let me see that, that black one. Gloves have changed a little bit, right? See how it's changed? The game has changed. The field hasn't. That's still 90 foot. Bases, 60 foot, 6 inches. Pitchers, man, that's all still the same. But the game has changed. The equipment has changed. The technology that makes us better in baseball has changed. When I pitched in 88 through 94 professionally, the average fastball at that time was 86.7 miles an hour. And I was proud that I threw over the average because I threw about 88. That was it. Now, the average fastball today is 92.2 or 92.7, depending what you read. Us as people haven't changed. Well, maybe some of the equipment changed, but this doesn't make me feel harder. But you know what changed? This technology. Who knows what WWW stands for? Worldwide Wrestling? Worldwide Web. Worldwide Web. Good job. Good job raising your hands, guys. Raise your hands. Worldwide Web. So what happened now, the coaches are able to collaborate. They're able to talk to each other and figure out, hey, this worked really good for my pitcher. How about you? Yeah, this worked really good for mine. Hey, what did you do? What did I do? And then the scientists got in. And then the cell phones came out. 
hey, let's video them and let's see it slow-mo because I can't see the natural, how quick that body's moving. Do you realize the quickest body movement ever recorded in a laboratory came from a pitcher? The art of pitching was the quickest ever recorded body movement ever that the body has made. And they said that if that arm wasn't attached, it would roll around 24 times in the socket before it stopped. That's how hard the body throws a baseball. So guys, what I'm teaching you today about the balance point and about going through the balance point, all that stuff and I'll teach you later, isn't what I learned in pro ball today or when I played back when. I studied technology and I studied science. And I found out, well, if 100 pitchers do this and they're throwing 95 miles an hour, I don't teach the same thing that I taught, that I learned back in 88. Because at that time, they didn't have all that. So that coach taught what his coach taught, what his coach taught. But now I didn't stop learning. There's a lot of big league guys that get out of big leagues. And, oh, I'm going to teach you what I learned. Well, if I did that, I'd teach you how to throw 87 miles an hour. So I continued to learn the game because the game has changed. Just like this glove back in the 50s, the glove today looks a lot different. The game changes, guys. So how many of you guys ready to start learning hayas and some cool things? I don't know what you got They're next, They're ready for rest. Let's go, rest. Right, let's go. Well, you're, you're on you. I got the, uh, just remember, I got the king of the hills. So we, can, we can bring them up in stations. 